I live in this tiny apartment here in Japan, and it is 4.08 a.m. Wednesday, January 20th, my time right now. And I'm not joking. Like I was recording a really good uh, clip for this question. And like someone living above me, no idea who it is. Just I live in an apartment building and the person above me, like they flush the toilet so fucking loud. I literally like had to just stop the question. Like I could have edited the clip, but I'm just like, no, I had to like actually stop the question. So now coming back to this clip. All right. That was a nice intro. Let's, uh, let's just, why don't we just get into it now? Right. Well, look, this vignette, uh, this is going to be a diagnosis of uh, mononucleosis. Mono is actually a bit of a challenging diagnosis based on patient clinical picture alone, because the findings aren't really specific for anything. You could have fever, night sweats, weight loss in many things, including cancer, right? Uh, or even in leukemia. And of course, there's lymphadenopathy here. And that could be reflective of uh, many conditions. So as I said, the patient's clinical picture in and of itself uh, is never really too specific where you're like, oh, obviously that's mono. So we have to keep reading. And we look at the, the biopsy of the lymph node and we can see negative for CD5, positive for CD19 and 20. You're probably like, no idea what that fucking means. Just take two steps back, chill out for two seconds. And CD19, CD20, these are B cell specific markers, okay? CD5 negativity means this is not CLL, okay? Chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I'm not inserting that into this question because I'm trying to be cool or I'm trying to make this like nitpicky or weird. This is actually on NBMEs for step one where CD, CLL, the lymphocytes can be positive for CD5 and CD23. And I've seen mono questions where they'll say negative for CD5 positive for CD19 and 20. And yeah, the negative for CD5 just means it's it's not CLL, okay? Not that the answer choices even relate to it, but I'm just I'm just giving you a bit of a, an NBME style question that I've written here. So CD1920, it's EBV that invades B cells, that's our answer. About 90% of the time mono is due to EBV infection. About 10% of the time it's due to CMV, okay? And uh, CMV, based on what I've read in the literature, there are no significant data to indicate that it overwhelmingly infects B cells, okay? So it's EBV that predominantly infects B cells. And then this is, this is really important. I just, this is crucial. EBV infects B cells. Once these B cells are infected with EBV, there are reactive lymphocytes that are T cells, CD8 positive T cells are reactive lymphocytes that then will attack the EBV infected B cells. So I'm emphasizing this because we say B cells and T cells, I don't want you to confuse. USMLE specifically wants you to know EBV infects B cells. However, the atypical lymphocytes that you've heard about with mono are CD8 plus T cells, not B cells. And they're specifically called reactive T cells. So the NBME slash USMLE will have reactive versus non-reactive, T cell versus B cell. You just say, well, the atypical lymphocyte is reactive and it's a T cell, CD8 positive, okay? So the other thing to note is that uh, the heterophile antibody test, also known as monospot test, is uh, positive for EBV mono, but not for CMV. Uh, why it's called heterophile antibody test, very fucking weird. Um, for whatever reason, we will develop antibody. A patient who has uh, EBV mono will develop antibodies uh, that cross-react with uh, horse and sheep RBCs. Extremely fucking weird, as I said, but that's why it's called heterophile antibody test is hetero, binds to many, has, it's file, has an affinity for many antigens, not just EBV, but also uh, horse and sheep RBCs, okay? But we don't get a positive heterophile slash antibody, heterophile antibody slash monospot test with CMV. It's only EBV. Uh, the other thing is CMV can cause uh, linear ulcers, okay? Linear slash confluent ulcers of the oropharynx. So I don't want to get too tangential, but the USMLE likes you to know that herpes is punched out ulcers. CMV is linear ulcers. And 
they're linear because you get smaller ulcers, small ulcers that become confluent. So they, they become linear, like striae. So they'll give you, for instance, if, if this were CMV mono, they could have given you, or I could have written a question where it sounds like this. And then I say, uh, rather than these biopsy findings, I tell you there's confluent ulcers seen uh, in the posterior oropharynx, and that would be CMV. And CMV can also cause positive cold agglutinins. It can cause uh, IgM antibodies against RBCs, uh, leading to a cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. That's something else the USMLE will do is they'll give you, for instance, CMV mono, and then they'll say the pathogen that's causing this condition uh, is can also cause what? And the answer is hemolytic anemia. Very difficult, okay? That's CMV and mycoplasma, notably, are two pathogens that can cause IgM against RBCs, leading to a cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And those IgM that attack RBCs at colder temperatures are called cold agglutinins, okay? So uh, EBV is not going to do that, but EBV does lots of other things. You know, it's related to lymphoma, also uh, related to nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Okay, and EBV, CMV are both part of herpes viridae, uh, so it's DNA viruses and icosahedral nucleocapsid, and they're enveloped and they're linear. Okay, so uh, a lot I can chat about. Uh, just want to stay concise, but of course, CMV most common organism transmitted via uh, organ transplantation and blood transfusions uh, and owl eyes on biopsy right uh, so but this question answer is ebv just to be very fucking clear in case uh, i've been chatting too much now looking at the other answer choices barna hensele it's going to cause two conditions for usmle uh, number one being just simple cat scratch disease and number two bacillary angiomatosis or bacillary angiomatosis which will resemble kaposi sarcoma but they're going to, rather than giving you human herpes virus 8 in someone who has, they'll, for instance, they'll give you a patient who has HIV and they'll show you Kaposi sarcoma appearing lesions, violaceous lesions on the skin. And you're looking for human herpes virus 8, HHV8, which causes Kaposi sarcoma, but it's not listed. And you're like, what the fuck? But you'll see Barnell, it'll be all bacteria and you'll see Barnella henselae there. And you're like, oh, that's right. Barnella henselae can cause bacillary or bacillary angiomatosis, which presents similar to Kaposi sarcoma in immunocompromised patients. So that's one of the ways barnell Henslet, and then cat scratch disease, of course. Um, they can ask that very difficult. They can say a seven-year-old girl has a papule on her finger and uh, biopsy or gram stain shows a uh, pleomorphic bacilli that's stained with silver stain. And that's all they say. They don't say anything about a cat or dog. And you know, bacilli obviously is not going to be sporothrix shenki. Students would be like, oh my God, papule on the finger. That's like sporothrix shenki. It's not, okay? I mean, they said fucking bacilli and they stain with silver. I mean, that's, so Barnella Henselet would be your answer there. That's cat scratch disease. Um, now, brucella, okay, weird sounding, weird organisms, usually wrong, but brucella, brucellosis, uh, that's undulating fever, okay? So you get that from goat products. If they ever give you a brucella question on USMLE, very fucking unlikely. But if they ever did, they would tell you goat milk or goat cheese in some capacity. can also cause neuro brucellosis, uh, just neurologic findings in that patient. Coxiella burnetti, this causes Q fever. You get coxiella from cattle, placenta, cattle in general, but other farm animals, okay? So whilst resources will be like, Oh my God, Coxiella, that's like cattle, or Francisella tularensis is rabbits, or Chlamydia setachi is birds, OMG. Like we make these tight associations, but like they can just tell you like guy has a, a pet goat or pet sheep and he has Q fever, okay? I mean, they can make difficult questions, but as I said, as I said before, Rusella is a goat milk or goat cheese, Coxiella, usually cattle, okay? But farm animals. And this will cause Q fever, which is going to be an atypical pneumonia. Lots of different presentations of Coxiella. Even very rarely, it can cause uh, Q fever endocarditis. And I've actually seen that in real life uh, when I was doing my ICU term in fourth year medicine. But um, Coxiella burnetti, once again, this is just going to be, um, this is actually wheel Felix negative. That's a detail you could know about Coxiella burnetti, is that it's technically in one of the, it, it's, it can be considered technically a type of rickettsial infection. So rickettsial infections like rickettsia prowazaki epidemic typhus, rickettsia uh, 
typhi, endemic typhus, rickettsia tsutsugamushi, which is um, scrub typhus, uh, those will have a positive wheel Felix test, um, which means when you develop antibodies against those rickettsial infections, uh, they'll cross-react with Proteus O antigen. Why? No fucking idea, okay? But that's called a wheel Felix test. And Coxiella Bernetti is notably negative. It has a negative wheel Felix test. And they will literally say that. You think I'm joking? I'm not. The same way I have like negative CD5 in this question, which sounds weird. Um, as I said, that's, that means not CLO. They could just tell you like, dude has a fever and there was no cross reactivity with Proteus O antigen. And they're just trying to tell, they're just pushing you in the direction that this is Q fever, Coxiella. So look, that's it for this question. All right. Uh, mononucleosis. Um, this will wax and wane over the course of the patient's life. EBV will go latent. EBV and CMV. It'll go, they'll go latent and uh, will present as uh, recurring fatigue. Okay. But the initial presentation will present as generally fever and diffuse lymphadenopathy. Uh, just presents as a very, uh, you know, overwhelming malaise slash coryza. Okay. Um, so maybe I, sh I shouldn't use the word coryza. That's more in association with viral infections, but, uh, generally just malaise, um, and lymphadenopathy. That's, that's more accurate of a description here. So look, we could do a 70 minute oral presentation on all the little details, but, uh, this clip's already been long enough. So that's it.